Hey, welcome to this session today of Spatial Spotlight. Uh, today we are going to be focusing on, on routing. And if you're familiar with Carto, you already know that we have different approaches on how you can do routing integrated into the different parts of the stack that we use and within your uh, data warehouse. Uh, so let's start from the documentation here. So if, in this case, we are going to be using BigQuery for, for this exercise. And as you can see here, uh, we have two different approaches to, uh, uh, to generate routing. The first one being what we call LDS, Location Data Services. This is kind of the classic and standard way uh, in which we've been addressing this type of use cases in the past. Um, and basically, uh, it's powered by our partnership with different providers that we collaborate with, such as TomTom Tom and here. And we expose the APIs that they offer through uh, the different endpoints that we have in the application Carto platform. So you can call it from your data warehouse using a SQL function. You can call it from Builder, for example, or you can call it from Workflows, which is our uh, most recent uh, tool. Uh, that is designed to orchestrate geodata processes natively in your data warehouses. So in this particular case, um, we, can be, we can use this function called create routes. And as you can see, you can choose, depending on the provider you're working with, you can choose different options in which you will determine how you want to calculate this route. And something that I think is very uh, clever thing that we've done here is that we open this uh, a, a, a different input here, which is called options, in which you can really extend the um, functions that they offer. Different provider offers different configurations, so you can really adapt and uh, you know get the most out of each different provider if you are collaborating with this. So for example, in the case of TomTom, Tom, you can uh, use the parameter avoid to, for example, avoid a specific area uh, in the calculation of the route. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing. Uh, if I jump into my workspace, uh, you know, we, we have this, like I was saying, workflows new tool. And I have some of the workflows my colleagues here have been working at. I have created this one in particular uh, when I was testing this functionality. And in this particular case, what I'm doing is that I'm calculating one route between two different points, origin and destination. And I'm telling the uh, API to also consider an area that we want to avoid in this calculation. I've chosen to have these as inputs into the workflows. But if you are working with data warehouses, such as BigQuery, for example, or Snowflake, you can really connect this to your tables. So you will have everything. Uh, in your tables can be input into this workflow and then executed into something, uh, into a new table, or, or the output can be generated into a new table. But in this case, I've chosen to have it as a manual input. And you know, this is the destination in some place in the south of Spain. And this is the area that we want to avoid, which is right in the middle between Madrid and this city in the south of Spain. Now, what we because the different functionalities or the different inputs that TomTom Tom in this case allows, we really need to shape and modify the data in a way that is really understood by the end API endpoint. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting uh, the boundary of this, func of this uh, square, of this geometry, and translating this into something, into a string that is understandable by the API endpoint. Configurating this in here, what I'm saying is that I want to call the routing function and explicitly avoiding this area, which is, again, general retrieving the data from the input that I created here and parsing it in a way that is understandable by, by the endpoint. And at the same time that I'm doing, the, I'm doing this avoid area type of calculation, I'm just doing the regular one, just origin to destination one. We have a component in workflows for that that is just taking the origin geom, destination geom, and setting up a parameter for how you want, what type of transport you want to use into this calculation. And then a bunch of different uh, calculations here. And 
everything joining into one single table. And the result of this, of this is that, uh, let's jump in here, as you can see, just sum this up, sorry. Just refresh this, I think I'm lost the, the base map. And just give it a couple of minutes. And we can see here, so this is the alternative version of the route, which is avoiding this area that was in the middle between Madrid and the south of Spain, and the original one, which is the one crossing almost in a direct line. So that's that's one of the approaches. That's the, let's say the standard one, the classic one. But we also have a new kind of approach that we've been developing at Carto. Uh, and it's, uh, it's an experimental approach in which we are using uh, BigQuery in this case to really calculate, take the lead on calculating the, the routing. So in this case, we are not calling an external API. We're just using the power of BigQuery to really calculate the, the routing. One of the cool things, are probably the thing that makes it different from, from the other approaches is that we can use a uh, choose whatever network we want to use. In this case, Carto, Carto is actually offering a road network that's being extracted from OpenStreetMap. But in reality, in theory, you can actually use whatever network you want to use. You want, if you want to create something uh, that is not necessarily a road infrastructure, you can use that as an input for your network in the calculation. And that opens up a variety of use cases that are not directly related with the most traditional ones. Uh, within the, let's say, the car, typical route calculation for, for a car. Um, so that being said, we, we are, like in the other case, we have a bunch of different parameters. We have the starting point, destination point. In this case, we are uh, calculating a routing ma matrix. So it means that we can have different starting point and different ending point. We are also passing by an area of interest to kind of limit the, the scope of the calculation. And like I said, the, 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 the table, the network that we want to use. In this case, I was saying, we are providing this through our data catalog, a table that is available in the data observatory. You can use it if you are a Carto user uh, for free. And it's a global, uh, it's a global um, network uh, coming from OpenStreetMap. More parameters that you can use, these are kind of there for you to trick and play around the algorithm and the results of it. Same type of approach, we also have isolines. But in this case, we are going to focus more on, on, my, on, on routing. Uh, this is a, the table that we are going to be using, the road network. And as you can see, it's available in our data catalog. I'm already subscribed into my, into my account, and I can use it. And that's exactly what I've done in these other uh, workflows. In this case, instead of, and, and this applies the same for in, in, as, as it was in the other workflow, you can actually connect this to a data source if you want to use the data that is available in your, um, in your, in your data warehouse. But in, um, I've chosen to prepare, uh, to input this manually in, 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 in the workflow. In this case, I'm using the city of San Francisco in the US, and I've chosen 13 points, random points in as origin, um, at 14 points as destination. Uh, so as I was saying before, you, we need to pass by the, uh, the arise of origin and destinations, and we also need to send this function uh, an area of interest. And in this case, to make it more flexible, what I've done is that I've also calculated the area of interest based on the inputs that we are generating here. So for doing that, what I've done is that I'm unioning the two tables, the two origin and destination points, uh, or tables of points, 
uh, calculate the convex, com convex hull and then buffer it to just to be to have a merging of um, security uh, in for the calculation. And that's our area of interest. If I go here now, you can see that the area of interest, the area the, the area that's going to limit the calculation is basically uh, the city of San Francisco. What's next? So um, other than creating the area of interest, what I'm also doing here is that I'm preparing and parsing the data in a way, again, that is easy to understand for the function. In this case, it's grouped by arrays. And then you I can actually calculate the, the routing by calling this function, which is the same that I, we had here. Same configuration, but in this case, happening in workflows. Um, and I'm choosing the road network that we have. But like I said, this is something that we are open to explore. It, ideally, it should work for any other type of network. And, and that's, to me, a very uh, you know, powerful tool to have as well for these particular use cases in which you are not necessarily attached to the road infrastructure. Um, the results of these are actually uh, generated in the, um, again, in the map here. Let's go back here. Well, I actually have a map that I want to show you. So these are the results. And as with any other component in Carto you, in workflows, you can create a map out of the results. You can, store, you can store the results into a table. What I'm doing here is that I'm saving this into one of our data sets in, in, the, in our projects. And we can create, and because this is Carto, we can just and with a nice map that I've created here as the result of this uh, calculation. Another cool thing that we can do in here, um, and for, um, most certainly that um, uh, other of my colleagues have already shown the power of parameterized queries, we can actually filter the data in here. And what is happening is that we are calling uh, the, the the, 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 the endpoint and the big query tables to retrieve the data accordingly to the to the to the query that we are running. And I guess that's all from from my side. These are the distance, these are the, the parameters as I was saying. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this short session. Um, if you have any any questions or you want to know more about how scalable is this, how what other use cases you can address with this particular calculation of routes in within data warehouse please do reach out and yeah happy to help <laughs>